are back. Um, I say we're back. We're not live. We should be live, but StreamYard issues have prevented us from being live. So I thought I'd get my brothers on to talk things in a pre-record so we can get this out. Um, Champions League is back. Champions League is back with a bang. Not for Arsenal, but a bang for incidents, as far as incidents were concerned. We're going to talk all things Bukayo Saka, penalties, Gabriel, handballs, Harry Kane, red cards. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into what this means for the second leg for Arsenal. We're going to talk a little bit about the Champions League in general. And then, of course, the big weekend that is coming up of football, as far as West Ham, Spurs and Arsenal are concerned. No Don tonight, no D tonight. They're both busy out and about. But us four are back. It's myself, it's Guna Lee, it's Dan Lawless, and it's Deji in the house. Uh, Guna Lee, let's come to you first, bro. I, I, sorry, I was going to say only teams that are in Europe, but then I realised old Deji, like, obviously. <laughs> I, I, I don't Deji know why you're talking that. about. I don't There's know why an imposter among us, people. There's you an are, imposter among famous. us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you have that, Deji? Mate, I, I don't know why Lawless is shaking his bum. <laughs> he knows my opinion about them dusty competitions. I'd rather be where you guys are, I'm not going to lie. I'd rather be playing Champions League football. Any other football is rubbish. It's dusty as two and Cummings coffin, in my opinion. But, yeah, I'm good, to be honest. Um, I'm good because it looks like Easter might have started yesterday. So I had this thing I was telling you about, about the negative correlation between Arsenal and April, Arsenal and Easter eggs. And it looks like maybe Easter kicked in or kicked off yesterday evening. But look, I'm not going to shake my bum too tough. You guys got a draw, but it's made the uh, next week very, very spicy indeed. It has, man. Before I come to you, Guna Lee, as my fellow brother, Lawless, I'm sure you were smiling last night when you saw Saka at the end there, not giving it. Let's get your take first and then we'll come to Guna Lee. Yeah, you know what? Um, there was a lot of talk going into this game. I was hearing three nils, four nils, four ones. It's in a lot of confidence. It's not the same Bayern. They're crapping the league. We'll roll them over. Bring them on. We're going to get revenge. And the game played out very, uh, very differently. Um, I think, yeah, they was uh, Bayern was was massively underestimated. And I think they their game plan was perfect. The way they was ripping Arsenal apart on the counter attack. Let's not say Arsenal were, were crap, but I think big players didn't turn up. The the big boys that you're usually expecting, the the players that have been so good for Arsenal this season, didn't turn up that game um, mm -hmm. to their detriment. So yeah, man, like we'll get into the big decisions, but overall, it's an uphill battle. You can still do it, of course. It's an uphill battle, but. Yeah, going away to Bayern now. So if you and and you had a full stadium, no Bayern fans there. You had a full stadium singing the Liverpool song. You know, so it, that advantage obviously didn't didn't help. So we'll see in the away game. I must commend Guna Lee for his Twitter activity. I was impressed with his tweets. Um, I think I must. I even clicked a like on a few of them. It was very <laughs> unexpected, reasonable, rational, unbiased opinions which we're not see, used to seeing from from most Arsenal fans anyway so I commend you Guna Lee. Well listen I mean Guna Lee let's come to you brother I said personally on my my sort of stuff after the game and my content that I felt like we disrespected Bayern Munich as a fan base and as a football club a little bit because let's not forget that they have got unbelievable players like Harry Kane like Leroy Sane Nabry we know about who scored against us they've got Goretzka they've got Kimmich, Neuer, all these players that have been there and done it. And let's be real, there's only really Jorginho, Havertz, Zinchenko and Jesus that have from us. Everybody else is like their first time in the Champions League with your Declan Rice, Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel, etc. Right? Nothing. That don't mean nothing. Huh? That don't mean anything, mate. Football is football. No, it's but I'm comparing... No, but this, this is my point, yeah. though, bruv, right? We're comparing... No, come on. What do you mean, come it on? No, I agree with you. Like occasions matter. I think occasions matter and experience a big occasion. No, no, no. If you've no, never, been, if you've never I, played I, in a final, it's gonna be different. No, no, Lawless, you can't you can't chat because last week you told me you and Dan both started shaking your bum, saying, and I and I want to see Gunali's reaction to this, that you would rather win 10 Carabao Cups than play Champions League football. That's the dusty comments that was coming out of your mouth. Let me tell you why I'm not buying that, Dan. 
I'm not buying any of that rubbish from you this evening. The reason is you've been kicking ball for 31 games. You're top of the prem, the hardest league in world football. Bayern Munich have lost their last two league games. They've been losing to dusty, dusty teams. I mean, bloody hell, Eric Dyer that couldn't get a sniff at Spurs started, started that game yesterday. And you want to come and tell me now you realise that they got these... Those players have been crap, bro. They're not winning the Bundesliga They're not crap season. footballers, though. They're not crap footballers, though, Deji. But they've been crap this year, bro. Is Bayern Munich winning the Bundesliga this season? No, they're not. The reason why they're not winning it is because this team is busted in Tutankhamun's Carmen's coffin. And this was your opportunity to show who you are. In fact, I feel let down. I feel let down. I feel like Arsenal let the Premier League down yesterday. Oh, you're you really let down as a Spurs fan. You should slap them up. And you guys, you guys just let Bayern Munich source. That's rubbish, man. Don't, don't try and sugarcoat this. Don't try and make it as if don't put a positive on it. It was a disgrace. Ah, the cracky, the cheek of it. <laughs> Guna Lee, anything to say on that? Was it a disgrace? Was it an embarrassment? Are these teams dusted in suit and Carmen's coffin? Is it a disgrace to draw 2 2 at home to Bayern Munich? Listen, in the YouTube world, I say there's three people never listen to Deji, Don, and Patrick. Never talk. Listen, if you're talking about football, don't listen to them because they they are cheap. Are talk. For real? Oh no no no! They talk. I, I listen. I, I was quiet. I let you talk. They they talk utter nonsense. But what I will say is there is a little bit of credibility to, credibility to what Deji is saying. Now, what I what I what I kind of where I put my head at with this thing is Chelsea won the league and they were they were they were, they were they, sorry, the Champions League and they were terrible in the league. So like. You have to kind of put it to the fact that sometimes a team will down tools in one competition to lift themselves up in another competition. What what we saw from Bayern Munich is they have they've let the league go. They're not bothered about it. The managers come out and said the same thing. So if the managers come out and said it, they are obviously clearly going all in for this Champions League. They're putting all their eggs into this basket. So what I will say is, and on top of that, yesterday when I actually went through it. Eric Dyer was the only person that doesn't start for their national team. If you go through the whole 10, 11 players, everybody in that starting 11 plays for their national team. Lima, Neuer, um, Kimmich, um, De Ligt, uh, what's his name? Coleman. You, you've got, you got a Goretzka. Every, obviously, the front four, they all start for their national team. So what, what we're doing is the same thing that Arsenal have been doing for years and been, you know, been told off for doing looking at teams on paper and thinking that the paper's going to win the game when you have to go out and actually win the game there and there. Now, I want people in the chat, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if Dan's going to disagree or agree. And maybe you can find me evidence because I know he likes to do that because he's got his secret investigatory skills. I didn't see many. I didn't see many Arsenal fans going crazy in the sense of, I, we thought that would win the game. But I don't think that we disrespected Bayern Munich as a fan base prior to the game. I, personally, that's not what I saw. I saw a lot of Arsenal fans feeling confident because of, yes, Bayern Munich haven't been playing well and they've lost their last two games. But I don't think they looked at it and said that it was disrespectful. I saw a lot of rival fans. Do not think though, Goodley. Do not think though, just quickly. When I was saying, me and judges were saying, what do you think the score is going to be? I said 1-0 because I thought like they'd come and they'd defend and then we'd struggle when we'd knock at the door and then we'd finally break through because that's what I felt from what Deji was saying. They're dusty by Munich are struggling, right? I was then yeah. told in the chat by a lot of people, nah, have some chess. This is going to be 4-0. This is going to be 3-0. This know is know going to be 4-1. And I was like, really? Do, this do is a good side, by the way. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, right? The performance, and this is where I give uh, credence to what Dan Deji's saying. I didn't expect that performance. I, I really didn't expect that performance yesterday. I didn't see, I didn't think that they would wet the bed the way they did. The lights looked too bright, especially in the first half for a lot of those players. And that's where I look at it and I'm like, well, hold on. We've seen, in the, we've seen Man City as the clearest example of you have to go through adversity in the Champions League to then eventually win it because they've spent untold amount of money, brought in the best players and the best manager, and they've only won it once. And Pep's been here seven years or six, seven, yeah, seven years. So it's clear that you can't expect 
just for a team to just walk through and just get to the final and win. It doesn't work like that. Ch Bayern Munich have won the Championship, Champions League six times. We've not won it at all. We've been to one final. So I, I, I don't. I, I, I do kind of get where Deji's coming from, but obviously he's going to put his Spurs spin on it, and 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 that's where I feel like I'm going to put a bit no, more. No. I'm putting a bit more context towards it all. But no. you know what they say in life: nobody cares about the truth because the lie is more entertaining. And yeah, Deji's going to lie, and it sounds no. good. It sounds funny. You know. So listen, man. I, I'm not even I, trolling. I, I'm, I'm not trying even to trolling be... Arsenal, my bro. Uh, no, no, I'm I don't think you are trolling. And I, I, I don't think you are trolling. I'm actually, you... if you read between the lines, I'm actually showing respect to your club. I'm showing yeah, respect. I'm saying Arsenal's the best team in England at the moment. And we on the European stage. Wait, hold on. Deji, we let me stop you there. Deji, Deji, to let me stop represent you there. Deji, our country. Deji, Deji, That's Deji, what I'm saying. Deji, let me stop you there. Are we the best team in Europe? So in England, sorry. Or are yeah. we playing the best football? Well, can I can I say that for me, I'm, old, I'm like you. I'm old school, and, and, and I have to I had to bite the bullet. I had to eat humble pie on this. I had to eat humble pie and go and refer you to the fact that the table doesn't lie. At the moment, you're the best team in the country. Okay, let me ask. So last week they were. Yeah, last week yeah, they yeah, the yeah, yeah. So hold on, hold on. Thank you. That so De so Deji. Deji so, so who are you talking about? Deji, Deji, they who won. do you expect to Deji, who do you expect to win the league? Just 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 a name. Liverpool. Okay, fine. So what you're saying is by pr predicting that is you think Liverpool are the best team, but we are currently playing the best football. And that's where you're conflating the two. Because you're saying that we're currently in a position because what, what you could do, what I could do is but, oh but that's just my the, opinion. It might not oh, happen. Do you know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, so in your, yes, yeah. so in your opinion, what you're Based saying on is, what? A bit, no, in your opinion, you're basically saying Liverpool are the best team in England, but Arsenal are playing the best football. Mm -hmm. They've put themselves in a position. Because, Deji, you're predicting Liverpool to win the league. No, I think and Liverpool can win. But at the moment, at no, the no, moment, no, you're top of the league. So you're not you Arsenal, scored the but... most goals, so you're Deji, the best team. I even Deji. went as far as to say this week that usually the team that wins the league Deji, Deji, is the Deji. team that has the best goal difference. And you have the best... Goal difference at the moment. But that, yeah, I'm a really Spurs fan. I don't want to see you winning the league. So I will. I'm right, hoping Deji. for Liverpool to win the league. What I learned years ago, I learned is some people listen to answer and some people listen to respond. You need to respond okay. to the question. Who do you right. believe is going to win the league? I believe Liverpool will win the league. Okay, so what you're saying, what you what people can infer is you believe that Liverpool are the best team overall. Yes. Because right. they're, yes. Okay, fine. Yes. So. So yeah. by that metric, yeah. you can't then say you can't then say to the other side of it that we must win these games, etc. Because we aren't the best team in England. We're playing the best football, and there's a difference. And that's okay. where I'm going for you. So okay. what I'm saying to you is, yes, I think Arsenal shit the bed. I, I can hold my hands up. I do mm -hmm. because I, I I predicted three one. I, I genuinely predicted three one, and it was more to do with where we were playing and. For the last 24 games in the Premier League, in, in well, in the sorry, in, in this year, calendar year, we conceded four goals. Yeah. We've not made any mistakes. Not only do we not concede goals, we don't concede chances. So yeah. what we saw from and, and Dan was at the game, I watched the game, I was at AFTV. What we saw from the team yesterday were like mistakes that we haven't seen from a from the team for a long period of time. So that shows bottle, they bottled it, they yeah. bottled the first Respect. half, especially. Respect. Second half, they improved, but I don't think it was amazing. I feel like they did better, but I don't think it was, you know, this, you know, washbuckling football that we've seen from Arsenal for a long period of time. So I, I, I can give you credence, but I don't feel like you got to sit here and say, oh, you're disappointed in Arsenal because it's Europe. And it's not, I'm not going to do, oh, who are Spurs? I'm not going to do the thing, oh, who are Spurs? They don't know this, that. I just think you, when you actually take yourself out of that situation of the Spurs bubble and look at football as a grand scheme of things, yeah. every single championship, Champions League winner hasn't won their league. So it means that they've won one competition, but they've not been the best team in the con their, their yeah, country. That's fair. That's fair. So, so, so for Charles, Chelsea, they're, they're the prime example. Both times they've won the Champions League, they've not won the league. So right. I'm, I'm not expecting you guys to do the double. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, in the Champions League, it's a different kettle of fish. And the metrics that we have for Champions League, you can't put down Arsenal currently because we're wet behind the ears. And, and Arsenal fans had to learn that yesterday. 
I think uh, Arsenal fans had to take a bit of humble. Well, can I ask one question? Bro. Can I ask one question? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Look, everything you're saying, for once, for once, I have to say, maybe because it's a recording and I haven't got anyone to tell me <laughs> to chat, but I actually agree with you, to be honest with you. I actually agree with everything that you said. However, I have said this and I have said this several times. Europe, for me, this season is absolutely dusty. Dusty, dusty, dusty. And this is why I said people need to read in between the lines of what I'm saying. I've told you, Dan, to your face that I expect the Champions League to be won by one of three teams, Arsenal, City or Real Madrid. This was before the draw was made. And then Real Madrid bloody got Man City. So that kind of narrowed it down to two. The winner of the Champions League will be either Arsenal, if they're still in the competition, or the winner between Man City and Real Madrid. I don't respect any other teams in Europe because they are dusty. The gap between them and the Prem is too wide. So the reason why I'm disappointed is because you said it yourself. You didn't turn up, not because you weren't capable, not because you couldn't slap up Bayern Munich, but because you wet the bed. You said that yourself. So that's why I'm, so I'm allowed to be disappointed in you. I'm allowed yeah. to be disappointed yeah, in your yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. really, if, if it was down to football, you should have slapped them up. And 3-1 was the correct prediction. I had you to go through. Yeah, and, 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 and again, I'm not disputing the fact that I think Arsenal went to bed. I'm not disputing the fact that I think we should have won. We were one nil up. I think we should have gone two nil up with Ben White. And again, listen, Ben White's my favourite player. So I, I, me criticising him is null and void because I always, you know, give him a lot of support. But I do think, again, if he was, if he put had that chance in the Brighton game, he would have probably scored. And I just think that's where the players, it just, the, the lights just will bright on them. As, as, a, as a team, as individuals, the lights will bright on them. And I don't know why, I don't know how, because we went one nil up. Oh, it's annoying, actually. I actually had to re-watch the game today um, because, obviously, in the studio, you can't um, you can't hear the sound. But, like, I, I don't... The, the crowd was fully involved. We had everything going in our favour and I just think we just didn't... We just didn't do what we needed to do. But I think the last point, and I'll turn it over to you guys and Dan and stuff, I thought the team, I thought the team selection was poor. And I think, again, as much as I love Arteta, I think he's a great manager, he's, again, wet behind the ears. And I think he... He he's shown on many occasions this season that he's 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 improving with his ego and trying to make sure he's the star of the show at times. But I think yesterday he tried to do that and it's backfired. And I think that could be the reason why we go out and hopefully he makes some of those changes in the second game. You're on mute, um, Dan. You're on mute. Yeah, that is, I don't know why. Well, Sorry, man. Say pop, yeah. Would you? Uh, yeah, it's calm. Man. Would you have played? Jesus on the left instead of Martinelli, Tommy Yasuo at left back, and Party starting. Then Gunnelli, or would you made different changes? Because you said the lineup was weak. I wanted to get you there because I, I, I personally was shocked that Kivio started. Well, no, not shocked. That's the, that's probably a bad word, but we haven't seen him since Man City. Do you know really? what I mean? And he got he got skinned, absolutely skinned by Sane. And yeah, Tommy yeah. Yasuo for me is the best one-on-one -on -one defender we got. But other than that, I would say the team wasn't a shambles. But I would like to get your opinions on that, seeing as you were shocked by it. 110%. I said start party and I said start um I said start party and I said start um Tommy Yasu. Now I did say that it's hard to go against the manager because pretty much everything he touches turns to gold, especially in the last 18 months. He gets so much right. So how can I sit here and say, oh, well, like this, but my opinion is another team, a different uh, selection of teams should have played. So, yeah, like my opinion is that he got a few uh, mistakes wrong. And um, it was, I thought the Jorginho thing was quite obvious. I genuinely thought the Jorginho thing was quite obvious. But on the other side of things, I do think he got the, the situation right playing Martinelli. But I just think when you play Kivio, you're, you're hamstrung. He's, you're asking him to work wonders, Martinelli, with no support. So I don't know, man. I just think it, it was a it was a it was a position that we could have taken full advantage of yesterday. You got sixty thousand fans. Bayern, Bayern Munich weren't great. I don't think that this whole tactical game plan they had. I think they they worked on the game plan throughout it because we gave them two goals, and that is literally it. And um, 
yeah, listen, I'm not a huge fan of someone like David Raya. But again, over the last 24 games, I can't complain about him. But yesterday, he got yes, into bro. a position. He got into a position and he's just, he's, I don't know, he's like his brain got frazzled. And again, I think it's the, the moment got to him. It got to him. So, listen, um, uh, again, I was, it was interesting what Lola thinks about it as well. But I just think Arsenal really let themselves down yesterday. Now, my last point I'm going to say is, I still think genuinely hand on my heart, it's not copium or hopium as people say. I think it's a 50-50 game over there. I, I I genuinely do. I don't think Arsenal are out of it. I don't think the players need to be too hard on themselves. I just think that they need to think to themselves, look, it's time to now you've you, you've gone away to Man City, which is one of the hardest grounds in Europe, and you've got a draw. You now need to go and put in a great performance like that, but you need to get a goal. And that's it. Lawless, let me come to you, man. Thoughts on the game, but let me ask you about the three incidents in like together, because otherwise, if we break them down, we're going to be here all night, right? So mm -hmm. the sack of penalty, I want you to get your thoughts on that, right? And then I want you to talk to me about how Harry Kane wasn't sent off for elbowing Gabriel. And then I want you to talk to me about the actual, to be fair, the one you sent, you sent me, which was Gabriel picking the ball up in the penalty box, man. Yeah, yeah. Um... Harry Kane, as we know, is generally a dirty player. We've seen it. We've seen the little <laughs> piggyback. Yeah, coming from a West. Listen, remember yeah, you, your dirty players. players. Yeah, you yeah, you remember your fucking WWE wrestlers last week when you played us, mate, trying to fucking choke slam us from that. <laughs> yeah. So don't even get started. Yeah. We know Harry Kane when when he does his little little piggyback technique because he likes to drop people on their head, right? So we know he's dirty. Now, I don't think he's intentionally tried to elbow in the throat, like he's gone to elbow in the throat. He has led with his elbow. I think yellow card was the right decision. But I don't think there was the force in it. Do you know what I mean to to escalate it further? So, so I think the yellow card was right. He got the booking. You know what I mean, despite the intent or no intent. Um, the handball thing for me, yeah, that one, whether whether intent or no intent, should be a penalty based on the rules of the game. Like he's li literally played the ball, balls in play, he's picked it up. Whether like no, no, he no, made no, please, mistake, please, can I just can I just because uh, please. By the laws of the game, you're factually incorrect. There's law 18, and it says... Oh, here we go. No, no, no. But no. If you want facts, if you want facts, okay. if, you want, if, you, if you want to do facts, not conjecture, which is your opinion, okay, okay. then the facts Zero. say, by law 18, the referee has to use his common sense in any situation where it doesn't pertain to the, to the attack or the other opposite, opposition team losing advantage. There was no advantage because there were no buying players around. And the, the the referee used his common sense to say, look, the ball's come. He's not realised. He's picked it up and he's put it back down. So I agree. It could have been given as a penalty. But it, there's this. I, I said this earlier on. There have been four incidents in the last, I don't know, since COVID. So I think, what was that, 2020, right? There's been four incidents where VAR or the refereeing decisions have been concrete wrong. There's two for Liverpool, which was one against um, one against Spurs this season, and there was another one I can't remember. There was the Arsenal one against Brentford and Aston Villa against Sheffield United, which was the VAR when they, there was no VAR. And the other one was Liverpool when we played them, I think last season at home, and there was no VAR. It wasn't turned on, and Saka scored the goal. So Liverpool have had two against them, one against Arsenal and one against Sheffield United, which is why they went to the tribunal thing for Aston Villa. Those are categorically incorrect decisions factually everything else is down to opinion so I, I i'm not going to say that it wasn't a penalty but i just want to stop you there it wasn't factually an incorrect decision that's all i'm saying well okay he, he's used his you know commons common sense or whatever he, he's apparently he's apologized to tuchel after the game so it shows you that he's admitted He's made a mistake. There is precedent for it. Someone shared a clip of Bayern getting done for a similar thing when it came to a throw-in and the ball being moved and then picking up the ball over the line and it being given a, you know, against them. So there is precedent for this sort of thing before against Bayern. So you can see why they'd be pissed off if the shoe was in the other foot and it happened to, um, you know, it was Bayern handballing it. 
we'd hear Arsenal fans protesting corruption, blah, blah, blah. We'd hear it all. Like, there has to be... This is the thing. With common sense, it's not standardised. You can't standardise common sense across the board because one referee's common sense is another referee's uncommon sense, right? So we could see that same thing in another in another game and because it's the referee's discretion it's it's given as a penalty so that's the pro it should just be blanket no the ball's in play you've picked up i don't care whether you thought it was or not like that's that's you know what i mean not what it is because it's the same way like if if a if a, a keeper picks up the ball on a back pass it's like oh i forgot the rule well that's your own fault mate you know so that's where i feel on that um yeah i don't like this this intangible unstandardized rules the penalty decision look dive or no dive it that's contentious to me whether you can call it a dive depending on what your what your interpretation of a dive is is he has tried to make that contact happen it is his fault right so Listen, I'm I can't argue too much dive or one way. I don't know what went on in his mind. All I know is he's looked for it. He's looked for that penalty rather than going around the keeper and trying to shoot. Um, big bollocks on the ref, right decision. And you know, we wouldn't none of us would want to see them sort of penalties given against our teams, like so. I think that was it was just silly um from from Saka to do that. <laughs> You know, I mean, his legs in an unnatural position. We, I was on the show earlier. We watched it over and over again. So, yeah, no pen. Uh, listen, Arsenal fans have been like, oh, he does. He thinks all the decisions that went against Arsenal were, you know. I'm just that's how I feel. No. Well, I mean, look, I, I hear what um, Guna Lee is saying in relation to discretion, and I the only thing I would say is it's a pen. However, it would have spoiled the game. You know, Arsenal for sure. If that pen was given. Arsenal would have gone on to lose that game. And so from a footballing perspective and an entertainment perspective, I would rather Bayern or Arsenal win on merit and not buy some dodgy decision. So, But, but no reason, decision, Deji, um, should be based on whether it spoils the it game. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But I see the lot. I, I can, but how many times have we watched the game and they send off a player after two minutes? And then you know it's just sport a spectacle. Do you know what but I mean? But, but that, but it's but you, I, I hear it, but it, like the I same. Know, if, I, if, I, if they were that, playing but... Burnley in the Premier League on Tuesday, it should be the same rule as it, playing it, Bayern in it, the Champions League. It should be. Tuesday. It should be. But with the amount of money involved, because you know, with you, Lawless, you, you know, you you don't actually take into consideration that there's money on the table because all you give a damn is your silver spoon. There's you know, do you know what I mean? The, the truth, the truth, of, the truth the of the matter right is that because of the money involved, these sort of decisions are not easy there's, to make. There's and more money in the I'm, window, Deji. I'm, 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 I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying that I can see the logic behind it. It would have spoiled, which was an entertaining spectacle. In relation to Wizkid, I think the last couple of months... He's actually been quite disgraceful. And I'm prepared to come out publicly and say that. Why have I said that whiz kid? I think the pressure is getting to him. And I think he needs some emotional and some well-being support. Why do I say this? Whiz kid had an opportunity to represent his country against Brazil and Belgium. And then he pulled, he pulled a stunt. He said, oh, I've got a knock. I can't play. In the effort <laughs> that he could be available for the next Premier League game that Arsenal had to play. And you can see that what he's done is he's put club beyond country, but also he's decided that he's going to be the reason why Arsenal may win the Champions League or the Prem. Because that thing he did yesterday was something out of... An, it was an Oscar-winning performance. I see the defender, I kick the defender, and then, and then he had the audacity... To get Vex. <laughs> that was the best acting I've ever seen. I, I, bravo. And then the fake and limp. Don't forget the pockets. fake limp, Deji. Don't forget the you fake limp. Faking it. And then he was trying to explain to Kane what he tried to do. And Kane was like, come on, man. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It looks like the pressure has got to Wizkid. I just want Wizkid to go back to basics. Don't worry about the league. You're a quality player. 
play your game. But doing all of this show, this 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 acting, for me, is one of the poorest things I've seen in WizKid since he's come out. Usually, I don't have much to say about him because I think, what what a talent. But he's, him opting to come play for it, opting out to play for our country, I thought that was shameless. And then that little Oscar-winning performance yesterday, he's fallen further down the pecking order. I just want him to come out and apologise and say, you know what? I messed up and I won't do it again. I've seen teams in the Prem who've been given penalties. I think Norwich did it or cruel. And you know what? They said, you know, you score a goal. That was the wrong decision by the ref. That's the sort of thing I want to be seeing from our players. None of that nonsense. Dan Gunnerly, I know you're in full agreement with me because you were bitterly disappointed. I could see your face yesterday anyway, you know, when you saw it. Now, I, you know, I think whether it was a penny or not, what is the problem with him cheating? I'm not condoning it, yeah. but hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, I see yeah, this hold, take from oh, you oh, on Twitter. Go on, let's hold, hear it. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I see this. Harry Kane, the England captain. Actually, do you know what? Even before that, even before that, why is it that all of a sudden he is, Saka is the worst person in the world because he's pulled out from the England squad. He, is he the first person to do that? Has no other England player, top player, ever pulled out from the England squad? I'll be honest with you. It's not disrespectful to say that there are players that have lesser importance that have pulled out of the England squad in the past. Saka isn't the first. He's not going to be the last person. Saka's position is already secured. Not that. So in truth... We're doing we're doing England a favor. Well, he's doing England a favor because you guys are screaming for was Gareth Southgate to make changes. So no, it wasn't his intention to do that. But what I am saying is, is he's not the first person to pull out from the England squad. But listen, I couldn't give a shit about England because I don't support England anyway. Respectfully, I support Scotland, so it doesn't matter to me what the hell happens. My second point and my most important point is, he isn't the first person to dive. Harry Kane. In 2012, do you know what he did? That scummy, disgusting human being. He swore in his daughter's life that he scored a goal against Stoke, I believe, when he didn't touch it to get the golden boot. So we all do scummy things, you know, Deji, yeah, as players. Now I've seen, hold on, no. Do wrong, don't make it right, Stay on mute, stay on mute, stay on mute. Hold on, stay on mute, stay on mute. So Harry Kane has done some horrible things before. He's dived in games before. This season, we've seen Sabozlai dive. This season, we've seen Harvey, um, not Harvey Barnes, sorry, um, Harvey Elliott dive. This season, we've seen, so of last season, like the season before that, we've seen Mane, we've seen Mo Salah, we've seen Drogba. Every Irish fan hates Henri because he cheated. So no, I'm not condoning it. But my, my issue with Saka was he didn't own up to his stuff. Not come out and do the whole, you know, pretend it because it was a dive. It was a dive, 100%. But own it. Don't act like a little pigeon, scared before, and yeah. trying to fly away. Before Respect. Deji comes in, right? Before Deji comes in, I've got to say, I was really disappointed with Saka last night, right? Yeah. But why, then? Why? Fan camp. No, no, no. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, right? It wasn't because he cheated. It wasn't because he dived. It wasn't going to be that. He okay. has decided to not go for the goal. Now, before people start saying to me, but he couldn't because he got fouled and he was, how are you supposed to hit the ball when your, your leg's not planted? All this rubbish that I keep hearing. That guy had one thing on his mind and it wasn't score. And that's what disappointed me about Saka. Now, this is my favourite player. This is a kid who's carried us for a few years now. Not that we could carry us across the line so much because we haven't got much, but imagine if we had a, a world about Saka, right? Arsenal would be in a different place. The only thing I will stick up for him for, and Deji's come out for him really hard, is the England thing, because I see loads of people players pull out. The other thing I will say is, last night he was the one who actually did score the goal, which for me was a, a really good goal. A Trossard was better, but that was a really good goal. And he scored against Brighton. So for someone who's dusty, like Deji said, and is no good, the guy's still putting in numbers, right? Goals and assists. But last night, I was disappointed. And to be fair, I was one of the only ones along with Turkish that said that that was not a penalty. Everybody else was livid. Troops, judges, uh, uh, who else? Oh, Julian didn't, to be fair, which is a, which is one that might Madness. surprise you. And a lot yeah, of the Madness. others... Yeah, a lot of the others were like, no, it's a pen, I'm livid, I'm livid, I'm livid. They were going crazy at me. I was like, bro, I've watched it again. He has yeah. kicked Neuer. Yeah. He, had, he could either yeah, kick I mean, the ball 
or kick Neuer, and he chose to kick Neuer and go over, and that no, was no, what disappointed what, what me. He did, Dan, what, what he did, Dan, is he so go on, did you say apologies? Go on, go on. No, no, respect, no respect. Uh, you know what he please, did yesterday continue. is he tried to take the easy option to score the goal when okay, fine, it could have worked, but the easy option wasn't the right option because the easy option was actually to score because it was 100%. he was never going to get a penalty. He was never going to get a penalty in that decision because you saw that Neuer. Yes, he had the planted leg, but I just feel like he's he's tried to initiate it too much. The balance of initiation from Saka was 75% when it needed to be closer to 62, 61, 60% for it to be a penalty. And that's the issue that I think Saka had. So, listen, the, 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 the issue is you're right, Dan. He should have scored. He should have, well, sorry, he should have tried to score. And I feel like he had every right to try and get that ball and go around the keeper. But, listen, he's learned from me, well, he better learn from his mistake. And if he dives, if he's died before, he isn't the last, he's going to be the, he's not the first person. I've seen it for years and years and years. Top players do this. Mo Salah, we've seen him dive. Bloody um, Son, we've seen Havertz do a dive yesterday. We, we, we want players to have a bit of a nasty streak in them. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not condoning the cheating, by the way, but I'm saying own it. If you're going to be that player, drop yeah, we all that. know. Everybody in this panel has been haunted by Drogba with his stupid theatrics, cheating, pretending like he's been hit, dropping to the floor. There's just different ways to kind of cut a sh shave that cat. That's all it is. Oh, no, sorry. Well, don't shave any cats, but it's just an analogy, people. But I, don't I just shave think... any cats. Don't shave any cats. We've got a West Ham fan right. here. Don't shave any cats. No. <laughs> yeah, I just think, though, we want Saka to be world class. And... <laughs> You know, I think Saka is a talent and, you know, for me, I'm, I'm all about bringing out our talent and, and the boys through the academy. I just kept thinking yesterday, if that's Vinicius Jr., he stays on his feet and he buries that ball. And, and I think that is the difference. You know, we want our players to be world class. We want them to, to have that edge. And and so we have to call it out. And what one thing I'm grateful for, Guni Lee, Dan, is that you guys, even though you're Arsenal fans, you can call it out. Yeah, sometimes put your hand up. I made an error. I made a boo-boo. It was a boo-boo. You got caught. Do you know what I mean? All that throwing your, your toy out the pram and pretending mm. to the cameras that you're legitly upset and you don't, you you can't believe they didn't give the pen was the bit that I thought was extremely, extremely shameless. But I'm not going after Saka. He will learn from it. I know he watches Dan's show. But he, he does need to learn. Do you know what I mean? I know he does. And, um, you know, hopefully he, he, he gets it right for you guys next week. And I say hopefully because I'm expecting you guys to get to the final. You should because you not getting to the final means that maybe Europe isn't as dusty as I thought. And I know it's dusty. So, look, it is what it is. We move on from You're it. expecting us um, to get to the final. You expect us to beat Bayern Munich and Man City or Real Madrid, yeah? Do you play Man City or Real Madrid in the semi? Yeah. Oh, no, that's no, love. At least get to the, sun, get, get to the semi. Well, let's hope we can, man. Listen, before we get move on from this game, uh, Lawless, I just see the second one leg going because this is going to be hostile. We're not going to have 60,000 fa uh, fans there. Um, and let's be real, bro. Bayern Munich have got this trophy or another. That is the only thing they can win this season because they can't yeah. win Bundesliga. They can't win the German Cup, is it called? Super Cup? I don't know what they it's called. Win, over they there. can't win the Champions League. They, mate, they yeah. can't win nothing. So they've already got the Champions League left and Harry Kane is going to be trophyless again if he doesn't win that competition. So they're going to be up for it, man. Yeah, this has to be a cup final. Like, even though it's a quarter final, it has to be like a cup final. They, they have all their eyes on this competition. Whereas Arsenal, your focus is divided. You know what I mean? Like, you've got another big game. Villa, is it, on the weekend? Yep. Villa. Um, tough game. If you listen to Billy, you know, you're probably not the favourites uh, in that game, if you listen to Billy. If Conz is playing, mate. <laughs> listen, he's, we, we know the chest he's got. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a tough game at the end of the day. So you've got this focus here. Then you've got to go to Germany. And then you've got three days later, who you got after that? Um, Wolves away. Wolves, 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 wolves away. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know yeah. West Ham, we did our bits there, but it's a tough place to go and they can yeah. have some players back. <laughs> so, so that's to get that. Yeah, where, yeah, whereas Bayern, this is it. It's all on this, it's all or nothing. Yeah, 
like the documentary says, all or nothing. So, yeah, man, I I can't. Yeah, I, I would say it's not 50 50, like Guna Lee says. I'd probably say it's 60 40 to Bayern. In yeah, terms I agree of, with that. I think you still have a good chance because they're at home. That's the only reason because they're at home. Yeah. Same I'll in Man City as well. I tell you why I think it's 50 50, and I don't know what you, especially Lawless. I think obviously Dan, sorry, Pot, so I think, you know, you're 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 gonna kind of as an Arsenal fan, you're gonna be a little bit more apprehensive. But I think with Lawless, it might be easier to kind of bring you down in terms of the percentage. They're missing Davies straight away. He's one. So he that he's not gonna play against them. I think the fact that Arteta is gonna learn from his mistakes that I just don't see Kibior playing. That is one thing for certain, two things for sure. I think that's gonna make a difference. I do think the fact that they have to come out and attack us, I do think it it, I'm not saying it plays into our hands because I don't even think we're a great attacking counter attacking team, but I do yeah, think it helps know. us. No, no, no. I'm saying I don't think we're a great at counter attacking team. They, I think they have to come out and attack us. They're at home, they have to win the game. So I think that it does play in our favor. So, but you have I, to win, like, it's a cup, it's a cup game. Like, it's what basically this is one knockout game. So you have to win. Yeah, it. So you, you, you got to think, though. You, you, you got to think, if us, if, for, for us. The Bayern might think, you know what, take it to penalties. You, you like literally, we might actually just think that, like, oh, take it to penalties, and whatever happens, pot lock, pot lock. Obviously, we know Neuer is a great penalty so, so, uh, shopper stopper. Sorry, so yeah, that's that that can happen. But I'll be honest, man, I I really think it's a 50-50 game. I think they're missing a few players. You don't want to take the risk. You don't want to take <clears> the risk. We we know we know that. Oh, they know that we're gonna have some real good um. You know advantages in terms of playing you know our set pieces we we can make some substitutes and we can make some you know squad differences and i think party has got to come in i think party has got to come into the team and i think with those two players straight into the team you increase your chances of winning from 40 percent up to 50 percent. i think it, that's what makes it an even game so listen I'm not sitting here saying that we're going to go through, but I don't think that, you know, there should be as much fear-mongering from our, our fans, especially rival fans. Of course, they're going to say what they need to say, but yeah, I'm not I'm not as worried as others. I I've got a legit got the mentality. Yeah, I, I, it's the mentality thing, but also uh, I, I, I do find a couple of things quite strange and someone tried to explain it to me yesterday, but it'd be good to get your opinion. Why doesn't Trossard start for this team? Why isn't Partey starting? Like, I, mean, this is, I, I don't watch Arsenal. I don't give a shit about your, your club. But it's obvious that these guys... Trossard seems to do it every time he comes on. And Partey, if he's fit, should be starting. Why? You said, you, <laughs> so said, you said something really, really sensible there. Trossard does it every time he comes on. That's why he don't start. There you go. Because he does it every time he comes on. When he does start, mm -hmm. ain't quite the same. He's a yeah. brilliant impact sub. But we've started him. And I was like you, Dej. I was like, start this guy. He's brilliant. He's scoring all the time when he comes on. He just stopped. Stopped scoring. And I'm like, what's happening with this guy? Yeah, now, yeah. comes on against Brighton, scores. Comes on against last night, scores. So, that's that one. Party, it just ain't fit, bruv. That's literally yeah. it. If he's fit, he starts. He's better than Jorginho. Jorginho's done really well, to be fair to him. But actually, when you look at it last night, I thought he got eight, eaten up. And I thought Rice was poor last night, Lee. I can't lie. Yeah. I thought that was one of the worst games I've seen him play. So, yeah. I thought for me, there was a couple of players off it. And I think the pressure got to him. I thought we showed a little bit of naivety last night. Players that I re really rated, Rhea, poor, Gabriel, poor, Saliba, poor, Rice, poor. All those guys have been wicked. Yeah, Ben White, not great. Do you know what I'm saying? Even Kivio, like people were saying, oh, he's definitely a starter now. He was terrible, got subbed. So I just think the pressure got to these people, man. And I look at it and I think, why is Rhea and Gabriel doing that in the box anyway? Whether you think it's a penalty or not, shows that we ain't ready. Shows that we're young, naive. So, I don't know. That's where I'm at with that one, man. And I think for Villa now, we have to try and ensure this don't mess up our mood because we've got a good momentum going in the league. We need to keep that going, man. Seven wins and it's ours. That's the way we got to look at it. So, yeah, man. Let's see what happens. Listen, there's enough talk about Arsenal. We ain't spoke about Spurs dead yet. And then West Ham tomorrow are obviously going to go to um, Bayern Leverkusen, which is going to be the, mad. The tougher fixture, by the way. The harder team, the better yeah. team. Yeah, Leverkusen's better. You know what? I can't even, I can't even yeah. sit there and lie to you and say you're talking rubbish because you aren't talking rubbish. They mm. are not beaten yet. So you're going to yeah. have a tough game, man. But we'll come to that Whatever in a minute. the competition is, and we talk about Europa League being dusty, Arsenal played the dusty team. We're playing the champions elect, yeah, of, of Germany. So... 
Get you know, that pot. Can we give uh, can we give Lawless the uh, the championship already now? Uh, can we give him the Premier League? What hold it? Can, can we also give him the World Cup again because of that? Because they're playing the better team, please. <laughs> You go in Europe to play the best teams, isn't that the lore of the Champions League? You go into the well, second that, that, that is the thing, but you, you shamelessly last week, Lawless said you'd rather win the Carabao Cup than have the opportunity to play the likes of Leverkusen, Real Madrid, Barcelona. So before you even start shaking your bum. You don't. You don't even want this for your. But, but who have Arsenal played then? Who have Arsenal played of that? Have they played? You know, what I mean, this is this is the first time they've played a, a team with any sort of, you know, credentials, and they're not even the best team in Germany. Do you know what I mean? Like end of the day. Listen, so listen, you just cr- you just concentrate on Bayern Leverkusen. Do not lose, because oh, oh you, wait a minute, what's this? Do not you're lose. You're out. Well, what? do not lose. So I was just going to—I was just going to explain why. Because you will not be in the race for Europe show next year. Because you will not be finishing in the uh, top seven like you think, bro. So that will be it well, for actually, you. You'll be down in the dumps. You'll be down well, with West Ham. Like long again, mate. I'll have to—I'll oh. have to twerk for uh, uh, as Deji would say, shake my bum for Arsenal to get us that De- extra De- place. De- 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 Deji will have to take your place next season, bro. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying? Well, really, why? Why? Oh, 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 Pan, yeah. are you are you confirming that I already have a place at the table and the season ain't oh. even done yet? Bro, you're you're at the table next year, man. You're in Champions League. That's done, dusted, bro. Right? West Ham. I ain't sure. I ain't even sure what competition West Ham going to be in yet. I can't. Let's not even be teaming up with Deji yet. I'm just. I'm just asking a serious question. Are West Ham going to be playing European football next season? To be continued. We don't know. I know it's Tottenham in, will be. As Arsenal fans love to say, it's in our hands. Right? Touch, touch wood. Listen, I need to get the Robbie curse away. Where's that curse? Touch wood, <laughs> right. but yeah, is it? It is. It is. So you know, we're the team that are seventh. Newcastle, Chelsea, Brighton have all got to chase us. You know, at the end of the day, so yeah, it's going to be got tough. More chance. Yeah. We got more chance. Seventh for Europa League. Seventh. I think we've got more chance of seventh. I, the the I team, like, do you know what? I, the team I really fear is Liverpool in this in this competition. Um, you know, we more are than, more than Leverkusen. Leverkusen ain't yeah, lost. We, we are we we do well in Europe. We are built to play European teams. We're built for this. Um, so we seem to be Europe's kryptonite. You know, we are <laughs> we are Brexit. <laughs> Love you, bro. Uh, uh, the, re- the reason why I want West Ham to go out is only for one reason and one reason only. Because I actually don't mind the West Ham. I know I said what I said about them, but I actually don't mind West Ham. I genuinely want you to go out only this season because I don't want you to go through to the next round because if you play Liverpool, you're going to go in a weakened team in the Premier League because you're not going to want to give anything away because you're going to play them in Europa League, I think. So I think if you go out in Europa League, you'll try and beat them in the Premier League and then you'll obviously drop, they'll drop points against you. Well, so, yeah, yeah, they'll drop points against you. So I just need for the betterment of Arsenal for you to go out against Bayer Leverkusen. But it's, it genuinely isn't a personal attack on West Ham. I actually don't yeah. mind West Ham as much as I did shit on, the, shit on you last season. Well, the start of this season. So, yeah. You proper did, man. I remember that show. That was so funny. You yeah, two were going yeah. at it, man. Nicky as well. I was like, this is brilliant. Okay. I've got to say... Nicky done him, though, isn't it? Most of yeah, them yeah, yeah. Do when he said most of them titles that you won, because he was like, let's not do this 13 league title. This one, he's like, yeah, most of you won it when people were wearing Pinky Blinders. Well, I, listen, like, I yeah. remember, I remember, I remember many league titles. I'll, I'll be fair, I'll be very, very fair. I remember, I remember many, many league titles, but no, you don't, no, you league. don't. What are you talking I about? Do. In, 20, in your life. Yeah, yeah, 2000, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, I do. I remember what, two, oh, three, three, oh, four, yeah, 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 yeah. you remember that one, yeah. Yeah, and then before that, what was it? Oh, two. There's yeah, three, yeah. three for me, three in my lifetime for me. Ninety eight, two thousand two, two thousand four. No, I don't remember ninety eight. No, I don't remember ninety eight. So you remember two? You just said you remember that's many two. league titles. That's two. Many. That's two. <laughs> oh, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> wow. Love that, man. Many's Love more that. than one. Many's more than one. It's plural. Many more than one. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So can but, can um, I throw a spanner? Can I throw a spanner in the works? Right, I think Moyes can actually beat this Leverkusen team. Yeah, is it madman? Because in Europe, he has this way of just 
shit as in results, getting through crap teams, good teams, beating beating up teams in a way that you just don't understand it. And that Carabag thing is stuck in my head, man. Because they only just went through Leverkusen, by the way. Yeah. That's, mm. that's, that, that's and, the uh, I agree with you, Dan. They are so dusty, this West Ham team. The dustiest team. We'll get them in their eyes. Too much dust. Dusty and Tutankhamun. come in. These like sandstorms. Sandstorms is how dusty. Are we are, are we dustier than Tottenham's trophy cabinet though? That's real, you know. We that bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you. You guys are. It is disgusting. Like honestly, I'm surprised that you can even stream lawless. It's that dusty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I I've never seen anything quite like it. So I agree with Dan. You could shit ass your way through a result against Leverkusen, a bloody nil-nil draw in the first leg. And then you do a little 96 minute winner, Antonio, or some dodgy, dodgy in London. Like that. you know, that's massive. The fact that we got the home leg second, that's what fucked us up against Frankfurt, you know, in the Europa League. Because we had the we had the away leg second. Now we got the home leg second. Yeah. You want to pray you go through this, you want to pray you get Liverpool in the final, yeah. not before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Revenge for 06, mate. I swear to God, if we, if we, I, I do them. feel like, I do genuinely feel like, and it's not again, it's not coming from a place of you know disrespect, but West Ham do have a fair, fair few players that are better than the quality of their club, and I'm actually going to say that about Arsenal. I actually feel like a lot of times I look at Saliba, I do look at maybe older guard, and as well as we are, I'm bigger as a big and as elite as a club we are, I do feel like. Saliba, for example, is a is a Real Madrid kind of caliber player. Yeah, what about, West, West, Ham? What about West, West Ham? Players? With West Ham, you've got Pequeta. He is way above West Ham's level. He's going yeah. Man you've City, got, man. He's you've got um, K- 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 Kudos. He is no, way yeah. above. Kudos. He's, I mean, Kudos is a Spurs player, in my opinion. He is. He is way. No, I tell you, what, Kudos, <laughs> is, Kudos is a Liverpool quality player. I'll be honest. He's, he's top, got, top he's level. A, he's a clock. Player, if you see one, and that listen, I fair play to West Ham for this That's game. a bold statement, Deji. You, you've got Jared Bowen, who I think he's now putting himself in another the- Spurs, another Spurs player. He, he's a but he's a level above. But listen, yeah. fair play to West Ham. So I feel like West Ham have got, and do you know who I actually really, really like for West Ham? Kufal. I, I don't know what it is. I just feel like he's. You know what? He's a he reminds me of a, he reminds me of a lower version of uh, of a Ben White. He gives you a nice six, six and a half, nah, seven out of ten. Nah, Lee, I think he's shit. Nah, he's he's underrated, man. man. No, he's not. He's not. But I think there's definitely two players that could should be making a step up in that West Ham team. Good, man. Uh, You've got Alvarez who. Alvarez is going to show that he's he's at a level that he's West Ham and just above. So I just feel like we would have been Spurs look- if he was available. By the way, Alvarez, maybe, so maybe, maybe so. Up. But I I just feel like West Ham have got every opportunity because listen, by Leverkusen only went through last round, as you said, by the skin of their teeth. So, man, I think they've got, West Ham. You've got every chance and. As much as I don't want you to go through, I actually wouldn't even mind you going through because, well, well, listen, West Ham are a decent club. They're actually down the road from me, um, you know, so... I'm They're down the road from all Let of us. Let me ask you I, to I do this, speak. actually. Quick question. This yeah. is an interesting one. This is interesting for me. I'm thinking about this. If you're... If you're by a Leverkusen, you've won... They've won the league, right? The league's wrapped up. Yeah. They can sacrifice the league, not worry about the league, and go all out for this because they've got that trophy. Go all out for win the second trophy. Might or as well. they can still focus on the league and get the invincibles. What well, for me, do? I think the most impressive thing you got to remember that um, what's his name? Go for the trophy. Um, the, the the manager. Uh, I forgot his name. Now. Javi. Javi Alonso. Yeah, Alonso. Yeah, sorry. Is um his first his first rodeo kind of thing, and he could do the double. For me, if I was in his position, I had one day. Bayern Munich cannot catch us right now. So you're not he's not gonna lose any respect if he ends up losing the last two or three games of the season. They've won the league. No one cares. He's done the job. I would go for broke and really, really make history. Do you know what I mean? Put Bundesliga back on the map. Really. But it's dusty well, anyway. Listen, right you have, why have you got an opinion on this? You think this competition is dusty, so you might as well. The Europa well, League. No, can I can I be real with you? No. So let, let's get this right because I, I saw the comments in the chat, Dan, 
and you've got some you've got some real bonkers um, uh, people who follow you who claim that the FA Cup is better than the U Europa League. Let me just qualify this now. There are only three trophies worth playing for. Champs, Prem, Europa. Europa simply because if you win the Europa, you're in the Champions League. FA Cup, if you win it, you get Europa League, which is pretty dusty in my opinion. But you want to be going, but you, you do it because you want to get Champions League football. And the other trophies, they're not even worth this. That's not even waste our time. So Europa League is the one trophy that I wouldn't mind Spurs winning, actually. I won't lie to you. I wouldn't shake my bum for it. Definitely not. I but I'll, it, be, I'll, I'll, I'll take Spurs it. Fan fan. I wouldn't mind winning something, but, you know. I take, Euro I take the Europa League, definitely. I'd be happy. I'd be happy with a Europa League. But I wouldn't be happy with an FA. So, Deji, uh, Deji, let me just ask you a question, right? I don't. So, go on, Lawless. Go on, Lawless. No, because uh, the thing is, I would obviously you ask him a question, but I was really interested to know what the Arsenal fans thought because obviously you did the invincibles. Go for trophies, man. You go for the yeah, double yeah. over the invincibles. Okay. Would you? So, if you could go back in time, no, in, it's no, no. So you wouldn't give up your invincibles for a Europa League? No. So why no, mean, why then? Give up the invincible oh, are you rope the league? Well, that's what we're that's what we're talking here. So it's nah, talking about nah, then nah, rather nah. than um, Lonzo prioritizing invincibles over the Europa League, he's in prioritizing Europa League over invincibles. Like that's what I'm saying. Well, what okay, no, the season the season when was the season when we won the uh, in invincibles. I think it was wasn't it Monaco versus Porto or something like that. Yeah, it Champions was. Yeah. Final? So we should have gone through and we should have won it anyway. Like we were the best team in Europe. So in theory, you could you give that same example. But no, nah, for me, I think just the fact that nobody's done it. Like you can say, oh, you were one game away. You were 30 minutes away, whatever. Nobody's done it. So I just feel like it's, we, we, I feel like we can win the Champions League once in my lifetime, at least. So uh, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But I yeah, wanted but you to. You weren't even the first team to go invincible though. In the, no, in, the no. in the new Premier League, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, even but, what isn't it? Celtic did it as well, but yeah, for me, look, I, yeah, I, I, the, the Torre, Torre, man. Torre's done it twice. One with in Arsenal, the early one with Torre, in the yeah. early like nineteen hundreds or so, wasn't it? Something was it, when wasn't it Derby or Luton or something? Yeah, Preston, yeah, yeah one at Preston, Preston, was that was it? it, yeah. Yeah, it was Preston. Preston. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask Digi, right? So you you yeah. you know you spoke about the whole trophies thing. Do you actually think that Spurs can just go from having no trophies won to start winning because you're belittling the Conference League, the Europa League, and the no, FA the Cup. Europa League is the one trophy I don't mind. Okay, so you're belittling yes, every, yes, you're belittling yes, basically there's only three yes, trophies that you think that Spurs are okay. worthy of winning. Do you know why? Do you know why? No, hold, hold on. So, so what you're saying uh -huh. is you believe. That there's only three Spurs trophies that are worthy of Spurs winning, which is the Premier League, the Champions League, and the Europa League. Yeah. And you believe that from the position of nothing, you can upserve Man United, who are crap, but fine, they spend money. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, okay, fine, mm -hmm. they're crap, but they spend money. Arsenal, mm -hmm. Man City, Liverpool, and Newcastle. I didn't think it, I, I I didn't say it was going to be easy, but what I, I what I did say though is look, you know, let, let's just roll back just slightly for one moment. Tottenham did get to a final a few years ago. Had it gone the other way, we would have literally done that. We re, we would have done a zero to hero number without stopping off at the bus stop, without stopping for water, without getting any any snicker bars on our way there. Do you get what I'm saying? So in terms of can it be done? Yes, and I believe under Postacoglu we can do it. I think we can bypass the Carabao, bypass the FA. I think, and I think we're more likely to win a bigger trophy than one of those minnows um, under this manager. I really do. I really think we're going to get a big trophy first, and that's going to be the thing that surprises everyone. Because so, we don't so give what, a you're saying, what you're saying is you're going to do a Leicester, and you're going to you're going to. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna go against the, the 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 absolute football trend, which is you've seen it with Man City, you've seen it with Man United, you've seen it with Arsenal, you've seen it with every club that they have to go through some tur turmoil, and then they have to come back and build, sustain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You think you're just gonna go past all of those players and say so these teams in the next two three years? I think 
and win one of those trophies? Let, let me let me tell you why. Because Postal Coglu speaks with chess, my guy. And this brother fills me with joy, fills me with hope, fills me with happiness. Yeah. When they were talking about, oh, are you happy if Tottenham get another point? You're, they're going to be in the top four. He was like, why are you talking top four? We're looking up. We're looking at the number one spot. So for me, Postacoglu doesn't really like to do the little minnows. If we pick up a minnow trophy along the way, it's all right. It's fine. You know, okay, we'll take it. But really and truly, his eye is on the prize, the big prize, Europa Prem champs. If we pick up FA Cup Carabao, great. But he's not going to be focused. Don't get it twisted. He's not focusing on those competitions. And that's why I think it's highly likely. I remind you again, Pochettino said the same thing. Why is everybody shaking their bum for the FA Cup? Why is everyone shaking their bum? And he took us to a final. Yes, we didn't win. But there were, could only be two winners. That There could only be a winner that day. We had a 50% chance of winning the Champions League that night. Well, okay, we didn't do it. And but I would rather be there than I'd rather be there than looking to play Wrexham, you know. What I'm saying in the third round of the Carabao Cup is some idiot thing, man. So I, I think that's what Tottenham I, I think Tottenham can do it, bro. Honestly, legit. I think Wrexham would have given Liverpool a better game in the Champions League final where they got there. Well, you, Lord, you, you don't sometimes you don't even believe what you say. <laughs> no, I'm terrible. Like I can't think of a worse Champions League final performance than Spurs. Saying, the fact you say you got fifty. So, 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 so what? But the thing is, Deji, you don't have the best manager in the league. You don't have the best squad in the league. You don't spend the most money in the league. I don't feel like That's even the squad. Hold on, hold on. Bro, I don't just started, bro. But no, okay. But what I will say is, if you, if I was to rate your manager, I think tactics. Four, well, no, I'll give him a five and a half out of ten. I think his squad development, I'll give him a seven out of ten. I think his his squad building, I'll give him a honestly, I'll give him a five out of ten. I think he's brought some good players in, and I think he's brought some dusty players in. So when I look at who, who are the dusty players that he's brought in, who are the dusty players he's brought in. Okay, fine. Squad wise, as because that's what I mentioned. I bought. I, I think Solomon, yeah. dusty. I think Brendan Johnson yeah. for forty million pounds, dusty. I, who was the other one? Right? Oh, Van der Vaart. Van der Vaart, sorry. Van der, um, Van der Ven, sorry. He looks good. He looks good. Yeah. Um, Vicario. Yeah. I think the jury's out Madison. on him for, for me. Madison. No jury, uh, for yeah. me, again, for, for me, I think he's very, very overrated. I think the fact that he's compared to older guys. You're, you're a bad man. Wait, hold on. But the thing is, I've always said this, and you, I've said this from the from age no, ago. No, I think he dicks in and out of seasons too much, and I don't like that. And the thing that he older guard was that the same thing what happens with Madison is what was labeled at older guard, but older guard doesn't do it. But anyway, but can we can we just but can we contextualize my manager in the sense that he's come from playing in this Japanese league, Australian league, Scottish league, come to the Prem for the first time, taking on a team like Tottenham, who were in the mud. And let's be real, apart from the three musketeers. The very next best team in the country is Spurs. But, That's the but, truth. But, but so how can we say he's not? How can you be giving him five out of ten? He is okay. straight seven and a half, seven, eight out of ten across okay. the board. You, you he's know worked what with a squad that Conte had you, dust, that was been dusted. Do you know why I'm gonna, do you know I'm gonna do, this is where I'm gonna get you? You know why? Because what? the same thing, the same thing you kept saying about Arsenal last season, we only got top four because the rest of the league is crap. You only got top yeah. four because the rest of the league is crap. Why is it that you yeah, moved this, the goal this, is this Would you say the rest of the league has cracked this season? Well, the big, the other two teams... That well, when, be, you, when you were there, Liverpool was rubbish as well. But, Deji, my point is, is that when we were, when we, when we got into the top four last season, you're right, Liverpool were crap, Man United were crap, Chelsea were crap. This yeah. season, Man United are crap, you've got Newcastle are also a lot of injuries and you've also got um, Chelsea who are crap. So the same three or two, whatever it teams that would normally be in the Champions League, not you. Are you crap. can't count Newcastle. That's shameless. That's shameless. All I'm saying is don't move the goalposts. All I'm, that, 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 because last season you kept saying the league is crap. That's why Man United... Well, the league was crap. crap. It was only between you and City. Okay, you can't say that this season. Okay, so now... There's another team added, but what we're saying is that the, 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 the two main culprits to get into the top four 
are rubbish. So they you're taking their space, really and truly. You haven't done you, it's not like you're an amazing team. The rest of the league, because you you think about how crap man united are, they're 11 points behind you. They're 11 points. It's not like a, a gargantuan amount of points that they, you're ahead of them. So there's there's gonna be a comeuppance of these teams. So let's just but let's we're, just we're see. 11 points behind you, and you're having and you're having an unbelievable season. Yeah, no, no. So, but listen, and, and that's what I'm trying to say. But but no, but remember, hold on, we're 11, you're, but we're 22 points above, above Man United. So yeah. that's my point. Where where the difference in quality isn't that great between if you want to say Man United, so between Man United and Spurs. For me, I, I really don't feel like Man United are gonna have to do that much over the next few seasons to get back. I, think I really don't. Good. But but that's look, look, like, I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to like crap on your club. I'm more just saying to you. You can't belittle West Ham. You can't belittle what they're doing. You can't belittle the fact that they're winning one trophy in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, because you're you 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 there's there's always a process in anything, and you are literally just expecting a house to be built with and, and no, you're, you're literally just expecting like literally just one day, grand designs, your house is built. But there's no, so but many so, steps. So, so let so me tell you what it is. What, let me tell you what it is, and I think. You know, I had someone on, I was doing a stream with a guy called Chris yesterday, and I, I think he articulated better than I've ever been able to articulate. What it is, is that we're doing what Arsenal did last season. You see, winning the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup doesn't show progress, It because anyone can win it. It just happens to be, it's on its day, your players turned up. But when you finish second, what that showed the league was that Arteta has, a, has built a foundation. That's why I keep going on about the top four. It's about you the foundation. foundation yeah, that you can continually happen. play at this level. You can continually be at the top end. Yeah, it, being in the top three team in the league. Once you've got that foundation in place, all you need to do is add one or two players and be able to kick on. And that's what we're seeing with your club this season. So what I want is for Postacoglu to lay that foundation and it might take two or three seasons, but if Tottenham finish third next season, finish second the season after, I would rather that than to win some dusty Carabao Cup, dusty but FA no, Cup. We did, did, did that under Poch. We did that under Poch. We're not making progress, mate. Poch, and I would where did Poch's foundation get you? Where did Poch's? Poch's Poch literally did that. Poch's foundation got, you got us to a Champions League final, bruv. And you didn't That's win it, so us. you still ended up with no Doesn't trophies. Doesn't matter that we didn't no win it. We got there. Still. We got there, though. And the you embarrassed that our yourself. Has laid. Listen, listen, because I know there's some dummies out there, and I want to qualify this tonight. The foundation that Arteta laid in the first two years has got Arsenal to where they are today. Is it not? Without it it is it not? Until they win, it means um, nothing. Until so they win, you, it means nothing. I'm asking the questions here at the moment. Wasn't it the foundations that Arteta laid? Not the first season, because anyone... You were already in the FA Cup. I'm not buying that. He wasn't there at the beginning. Banda, from that point onwards, he was building your team and getting you to where you are now. Wouldn't you rather this than you being fifth or fourth or sixth in the league, having won three or four... FA Cups in that period, but you're nowhere near challenging for the title. What is that? What sense does that make to anyone? The, the thing is, though, Deji, firstly, Arteta, he won something and then, and we, to, 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 he won something. What, well, listen, how, however crap you think it is, he With won something. With memory's team, like, he won, on, he won something. But listen, more to the point, I don't think that Ange is as good as Arteta as a manager. I don't think your squad is going to. I don't. I, I don't think your your board are going to spend the money and invest the way that we have. And okay, fine. Your manager is going to say, "Well, it's not all about money, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Look at Newcastle. Look at Man United. But you have to think the amount of the amount of quality that you there is in this league in terms of the top clubs. You are not going to go above Liverpool. You're not going to go above Arsenal. Well, maybe Liverpool. I don't know however they go next season. You're not going to go above Arsenal. You're not going to go you above sure? Man City. Are you sure? Are you sure? Here, here we go. Here we go. Are you sure? I can't believe this. You're, 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 actually, 11 can't points, believe. you're 11 points ahead of Spurs at the moment. And you're shaking your what I'm about to we say. caught you, bro. We caught I'm, up with you already. 
I'm about. I we can't believe what I'm about with you already, my guy. I can't believe what I'm about to say, but I'm actually team lawless. I can't believe it. I actually <laughs> team believe lawless it. in what? I'm literally, I can't, like, literally, I am team team lawless with this. I have to say that everything what lawless is saying, the fact that you are so demeaning to West, not even West Ham, forget West Ham, it doesn't even have to be a London carnage thing or London carnage. This is the London show. It is a trophy show and you haven't won anything. The idea that this is the same guy, right? This is the same guy, people. I want you both dance to understand. This is the same guy that mapped out a Champions League final under Conte when they were dusty as hell. And this was this guy was saying he's going to be AC Milan, then he's going to beat the next team, and then he's going to get to the final. He's going to win. This is this is the guy that we're trying to get through to. So he is absolutely. This is what I say to you. I said them at the start. There's three people on YouTube land you don't listen to. Edgy, Don, and Patrick. You I never listen to them before. Never. Listen. never. I have listen. to be very, very frank with you. I can't believe you're making me literally agree with Lawless. You can agree and with Lawless. lawless but I'm gonna stand. Yeah. I'm standing my ground. And at the end of the day, my bro, I can't wait to next season. My manager's already called it. He said, "You know what? Tottenham will be involved in the title race." Meaning that they've already lined up the additions, the additions that we need to bring to our mm-hmm. squad to take us to the next level. We are 10 points, 11 points behind Arsenal right now with seven games to go and you're shaking your bum. Come to my... You know what? When Spurs slap you up, would you show us a bit more respect? Well, I don't think you are, but there's listen, no two seasons are ever the same. So what you've done this season, you aren't going to... You've had a free run and you still lose games. <laughs> you've got all your players back. It's my, and you it's still- my manager's first season, bro. It's my manager's first season, Lee. Let me tell you the other the difference between Postacoglu and you lot. You lot at the top. The three musketeers is what I call you guys, isn't it? One of you, you right now going on like you think you're Dog Tanyan. So let me just pattern you a little bit, Mr. Dog Tanyan, and tell you what it is. <laughs> the truth is, Arteta's been there five years. Clock, eight years. Pep, around eight years, nine years. I don't know. I don't know. And people will, will put comments in the chat, whatever all these cronies. What I realised this season was that when Arteta was to, goes a man down, asked to go to 10 men, he knows exactly what changes to make to keep that Arsenal side competitive. The same with Klopp with Liverpool, the same with Pep with Man City. When we lost our players, when we went down to 10 men, Postacoglu didn't have a clue. Why didn't he have a clue? Because he's only just got here, mate. He's still learning the squad. There's something called test and learn. But let me tell you this, my brother. Two, three seasons, once he's got his squad, he's built the players that he wants in our team, we will be up there. Right now... Is that what you're giving him, Deji? Is that what you're giving him? You like to raise the standards. What happens in three years if you don't win the league? Has he got to go? He doesn't have to go. What's this pressure that they have to go? Why does wow. he have to go? If he's, got, won, he's got a job for Ever then. He's got what? a job for Let me let me be real with you. Five as times long times. as we are getting Champions League football, there's still opportunity to improve. You can still improve. And as long and for me, I would want us to be going deep in the Champions League. Minimum semi-final. We're getting a semi-final. I want to see if he can go one better the following year. Why is it that if they don't win the league after two years? You gotta remember. Pep ain't left. Arteta is doing bits at Arsenal. The only person who's gone is Klopp. So I I expect Spurs, or I'm hoping at least Spurs will, will, will chime in and push for the top three next season. If he gets top right. three football right, without cool. a trophy, that's bloody brilliant. All right, cool. Let me let me let, let me come to a close then. Lawless, let's close with you, right? And Poster Coglu. I think he's done all right, to be fair. First season at Spurs, pretty good. Champions League with Harry Kane. Everyone laughed, said it'd go Come wrong. On. I think it's cool, right? Do you think he's the guy to get Spurs to May and they can win a title and get into a semi final of a Champions League? Is that what you see Ange Postacoglu doing with Spurs, whether it be next season, season after, or in the three year plan that we, that you're saying two, three years? Get them to a semi final. That's what you're saying. And to the title race in May. Oh, a title race. Um, not next season. No, no. Like, 
you know, there's no reason. And look, there's reason for Deji to be optimistic, right? I'm not saying he shouldn't be optimistic based on what they've done this season and looking into next season, yeah? But at the same time, they're still not there to be dismissing any trophies. They need to win anything, right? Anything. Um, so, look, whether he they can go from zero to 100 with, with Ange, that remains to be seen. But you know, we talked about mentality. This squad don't have a winning mentality yet. So that's what they need to find. And how do you find that? By winning things. So we'll see, man. So do you, so. Do, do, does West Ham have a winning mentality? Because you want something. Yeah, we've shown ah. it. We've shown it. Do you know what I'm saying? What's your winning we've mentality? What's you win. You win a trophy. You get that taste. You know what it okay. means to and win what a trophy. Has that done for you? What has that done for you in the Prem? No, but I, I no listen. I, I'll be very honest. I know Dan's got us. So I got to wrap up. I no, genuinely cool. would trust. I would genuinely trust in a final. If it was Spurs against West Ham, I'm trusting West Ham, mate. I, 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 I honestly, it's not a me against you. I trust West Ham because I, I trust the manager. They're bo both managers are experienced, so you can't keep saying, Oh, you can't move the goalposts. Oh, he doesn't know. Yeah, but the Premier League, you, you no, but do, but you no, 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 no. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, in a final, I'm just saying, in a final, no, 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 I'm listen, in a final, and Spurs have beaten us this season, by the way. I'll Andrews, be very, I'll be very honest, I trust West Ham more than I trust Spurs in a final. Okay, I'll, I'll be very, if you two were playing, I'm going with West Ham. How far, how far away are these two clubs from each other? That's a good question. West Ham well, we're, closer, we're closer to you than West Ham is close than West Ham is to Spurs. Doesn't matter though. Really? It doesn't matter about that. It doesn't matter about that. I don't I don't know about that. I don't know about that one, that one did you? No, I, listen, like I said, look, we've the Angers had three attempts to 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 beat David Moyes' West Ham. He's failed on all three attempts. Um we did we won the trophy last season. We've been in Europe, we're in a quarter final. You know, we're in, still in a European race this season. You know what I mean? Like, whilst maintaining, um, you know, a European run as well. So, for them, who's had only the Premier League to play in this season, and they're, they're battling much. with Villa fourth, you know what I mean? Like, you can't say that they're, we're not close, that they're light years ahead of us. How? I agree. That'd be madness to suggest. Hey, Gio, are you light years ahead of West Ham? If I'm, I'm we're not even in. Let me tell you where we are. We are at the table with Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man City, and I think you're going to see over the next month. You're not in a title do, race. They are. What we do, what we do to those three teams. As for West Ham, they're with Newcastle, Man United, Chelsea, and Brighton. So are you? So can I, you're you're hold, 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 not, hold, not, not involved in, the, in that. Can I ask you a question? So, Deji, can I ask you a question for real? For real. Yeah, so no, because you're, obviously, you're, 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 you're 10 points behind, mm -hmm. uh, well, in front of, sorry, well, you're 10 points behind Man City. So in terms of quality, are you closer to, to Man City in terms of quality? Do you think you can, you know, you can upserve them and you can beat them over the course of a season? Because you're you're closer to their level. I, I don't think anyone can say that about City because City is City. But what I will say, though, is okay, with, okay. A few, with a few additions to the squad, we will be a lot closer next season for sure. Okay, okay. We don't okay. fear any of you Interesting. Brothers. Interesting. Okay. Listen, we're going to wrap it up there, man. It's been a great show. Absolute pleasure. Apologies for all of the drama that we've had, people, but we have got a show out, which is the main thing. Tonight, there's been uh, technical issues for those that aren't aware on StreamYard and YouTube, I believe. Um, big up, Deji, man. What are you saying? What you got coming up? How can people follow you, my bro? You know, big up, everyone. Enough respect. Deji Spurs, YouTube. Um, yeah, I've got, a, hopefully, I've got a Newcastle Spurs preview. I want to slap up some of the two Nami, put them in their place. Uh, and then I've got a kind of top, uh, top four kind of thing going on. And then hopefully, um, I just want to talk. I, I'm, I'm saving, you know, you, Dan, and, and Guna Lee for, for the North London derby. That there, you know, I'll invite you onto the channel where you guys get chopped up before and after the game. That's the plan moving into uh, the middle of April and beyond. Well, we look forward to that, man. Make sure you go over to Deji Spurs, man. Yes. Give him some love. Show him some love. Uh, make sure you go over to At Lawless as well. Uh, yes. and, uh, I think I'll be doing a watch along tomorrow. So, yeah, well, oh. if this YouTube StreamYard BS gets sorted, because I see Saeed's still not live, so it looks like it's still ain't fixed. But uh, if it is live, I'll be live tomorrow for the watch along. That could be special. There we go, man. West Ham Fan TV, get over there. Goodly, what are you up to, bro? Listen, man, just 
you'll find me on Twitter. No Spurs fans. I don't mind West Ham fans. I, you know what, Lawless? I hope you win tomorrow. I, you know, you know what? I want I want West Ham to win tomorrow. What's I, this? I, I, What's I, this love? What's this <laughs> that you guys are shaking uh, buns for each other? What's this? Oh, you don't like it, innit? it? Remember the uh, Palace in Spurs, actually, love? You don't like it, do you? Nah. You don't like it. Uh, do you know what? Actually, wow. I actually don't. I've got a few West Ham mates that live around me, like near going to well, I was about to say where I live, but going to a pub See, not too far from me down the road. He lives but, in um, West no, Ham territory. We'll say that. I, we'll say I that. do live in West Ham. Well, I live in West Ham territory. I'm not gonna lie, people see uh, well, all the time. Listen, mate, I, I listen, I mate, I don't know how much more of a West Ham territory you can say I live in, but yeah, I'll be honest. But listen, I I, I want West Ham to I'm gonna be oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna watch your watch long tomorrow. Uh, I'm actually going to watch your watch along tomorrow. I'm going to send a little super chat in saying, look, I'm there waiting. I'm, I'm there, you know, waving along. And uh, don't let me down, please, West Ham, because I'm, I'm giving you my support. So tomorrow you will okay. find me watching Dan Lawless. Nicky, is he is he going to be on it? He's in He's in uh, Leverkusen. He's gone, he's gone. All right, okay, fair enough. I ain't going to say, but I'm going to be there supporting the boys. Come on, you Irons. There, there we, we go, go. and we're gonna get a special. A, if we win, we're getting a special show. We, I want, I want Tobes to come on here as well. Yeah, yeah. bring on Tobes because he's there. So it's the same way after Sevilla, you're not beating Sevilla. Yeah. He says you're not beating yeah. Leverkusen. We will see it, Tobes and Deji, my did. Well, let's see, let's see. Listen, people, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow all of these guys, and we'll see you next time. We're out of here. Peace. Thank you.